that particular season um, was, you know, a great, great season for you. Um, it's, I think it's definitely fair to say, again, one of your best performing at the World Champs. Oh, 11. In 2011, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd run Picking pretty, up a bronze medal. Yeah, I'd run pretty well. I'd run pretty well that year, or, uh, all the way through the year. Um, and then, went to, yeah, went to the World Champs. It was weird, though, because I'd, I'd crossed the line again in, in fourth place. Didn't have a clue what had gone on in the middle of the race with Lu Zhang and Dayron Robles kind of getting each other's way. So I crossed the line. I was like, I know what, fourth in the world. I take that. I take that. It's not bad. That's not. I'm I'm quite happy because you've got Aries Merritt behind me, the world record holder. You've got David Oliver behind me, um, and then a couple a couple of other guys behind me. It's like, you know, I beat some good people. It's so I'll take that fourth place. And then I just remember walking, walking. I got my kit and then did all the interviews. And again, I didn't have any idea and I walked over back to this, the warm-up area and I saw Jerry the, the old um physio guy Remember oh Jerry Ramaji there yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course love G. Jerry. He, but G, he, was, he was a legend he was I so love G he, he kept me in he kept me in one piece for, for the year so massive thanks to him and then uh, yeah I'm just walking back from seeing him and then I go t- towards the bus and I and he's just like Andy Andy and I'm like oh G what's up I'm gonna go and get a drink now I'm gonna have a beer <laughs> And he goes, you come third. I was like, no, you dick. I came fourth. And he was like, no. He's like, no, this was disqualified. I was like, what? And I, and couldn't, I didn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And um, you were still on the bus at this point? I'm walking towards the bus. Okay. And, I, and I grab him and, and I had to go down and speak to somebody. Then I hear there's an appeal going in and an appeal going out. So I'm just like, you know what? A lot of waiting. I'm going to go back to the room. My phone's on. Just let me know what's what. So I'm, I remember sitting in the room with all the sprint lads, um, and it was, yeah, it was about midnight. And then I did an interview for BBC and then I came back up and sat with the lads again and my phone rang and they were like, oh yeah, he's, he's definitely going to be third. Um, I remember the room just went up. Like, it, was, <laughs> it just it was erupted. It was madness, yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that was kind of cool. What was but that then, moment like to actually go through that? Because, you know, we don't really hear about, you know, those situations are very rare in terms of the infringement. And then, but then having that process of having to wait, you know, appeals, yeah. you've only got to... Sh- a, you've only got a certain window of time to get the appeal in yeah, and then yeah. there's a lot of waiting around so you think okay how am I going to react if I win the medal how am I going to react if we lose the appeal yeah. I didn't I didn't believe it if I'm honest I, I, it, it just seemed a bit too far-fetched that it was going to happen that it was going to come third and I was actually going to get a medal I didn't believe it um, but also I didn't run particularly well my time wasn't very good and that's that's what bugged me so I almost felt like if I got the medal I'm going to feel like a bit of a fraud going on the start line on, 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 on the, the on the podium, yeah. and, and taking a medal and I remember reading some comments and people like oh he should be embarrassed getting that medal and, and this and you're thinking well you know should I even go up I don't know like what sh- sh- how should I be should I go up and and, and be happy with getting the medal or, or um but yeah it was, it was it was it was it was a bit kind of a weird one to take really and then I didn't actually believe it until I was the next day when I got summons to the room to go and get the medal, I still didn't believe it until I got the, the medal around my neck. Um, and I remember just stepping on the roster and then I wasn't kind of like, you know, how I was when I won the gold medal. It was more of a case of, you know, oh, th- thanks guys, no, nice one, cheers. <laughs> like kind of like a... Imposter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you go through a lot of that, <laughs> just listening to you talk about yeah. your career. I don't know if it's like self, self-belief self or something, but I don't know. I, I don't... I don't, it's weird. I just kind of like feel that I wasn't as good as all these other guys. So did I deserve to be in that rostrum? Probably not. But, you know, the fact is I crossed the line in front of other people and that's what I need to kind of remember. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, no one wants to be given a medal. You want to earn the medal. Um, but, you know, I took it. <laughs> <laughs> and the prize money. You? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the good thing. I suppose I got my moment. On, on, on the rush, I suppose, whereas other people who get kind of done, who get upgraded yeah, medals, a month later, yeah. or a year later, mm-hmm. when you, and you lose out on the prize money and yeah. you lose out on the moment. So at least that way, I suppose, I'm, you know, I'm fortunate, but it would have been nice to win it out. And it must have been nice to come home and share those moments with your family. They'd obviously see mm. your success, you know, your family within Barcelona as well, but now you're coming back as a world medalist. So what was that like? Yeah, it was mad. I mean... Because of the situation, everybody kind of wanted to know what, what my thoughts were. So your phone is just buzzing left, right, and centre, and people want to ask you questions and invite you on this show and that show. And, you know, it's, it's, it kind of changes your life, to be honest. And then, you, you know, financially, you, you, you're set for the next year or two because you're going to command pretty good appearance fees. 
So um, it was a it, it was a really good time to be honest. I enjoyed it, but um, at the same time, I I wanted to I just wanted to run faster. I wanted to earn my, earn my spot it, yeah, as spot, opposed yeah. to be given my spot, you mm-hmm. know. And that's what always was always in the back of my mind. Yeah, yeah. I know you mentioned about <clears throat> the financial side. Um, I just want to touch on that slightly because for you in particular. There's not many athletes who we, even we knew who we were competing on the team with who had <laughs> bare children. <laughs> <laughs> there was hardly anyone, Andy. I think you were like the only one we were on the team who was on the team. Who did yeah. you know who had kids, like two, three kids when they were like, you know, halfway through the career or Got middle? Got sprint lads and that's about, that's about it. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A couple yeah. of the sprinters, but, you know, it, it was definitely good for you because... You know, you speak a lot about having to chase that financial side and perform well because the money's not necessarily for you. You're not trying to go out here yeah. and get the money and buy this like flashy car or, you know, buy a house. You know, you're not feeling com- you're not in a place of comfort for yourself. It goes beyond that mm-hmm. for you. It was always about finding that financial stability for your partner, for your children. Was that always your drive when, you know, you're going from one champs to the next champs to the next yeah. race and, you know, those having those moments of having, yeah. you know, appearance being, you know, endorsements and that? I think leading up to that point, yeah. So the, kind of 2004 into 2009, kind of before medals, or, or, you win bronze medals, you don't really get much money appearance fees and so on. So you can't live comfortably off that. So every kind of race you do, you think, right, I've just paid that, this bill, I've just paid that bill or something. So that's kind of how you live for a little bit. But as soon as you, as soon as I won the golds, that, that thought never came into my mind. It was always, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable now. I mean, for instance, I'll tell you straight, that's one of the reasons why I used to love Manchester Street Race. I remember one, one competition, I made 20 grand and that's pounds. And you think, well, that's, that's not a bad little day's work. That's not. Um, and that's very rare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that doesn't happen anymore. No, for, definitely for, doesn't. For most of the races, you know, you, you command, you know, anything up to five grand per race for appearance fees. And, you know, I had Ricky Sims as my manager, so that's Usain Bolt's manager. So you were so the big leagues? You can all, yeah, you command a good money. Every every time you stepped on the start track, on the start, you knew you were getting paid. And that's before your prize money. So, you know, um, I didn't have to worry about, right, well, I've got to pay this bill with this one, and with this race and that bill. It was um, for the next few years, you know, you come to, but I didn't want to be that guy who, who's going to rock up to training with a brand new gold chain and the best new Gucci shoes and, and this and that. So I just took it all away and saved it all up. Um, and, you know, I ended up buying a house with my money and another flat with my money. Um, you yeah, had a couple of nice cars, but. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did come with decent cars. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't all about kind of trying to be flashy with the money and stuff. In, in with myself i'd always make sure that the families took care of first that's the most important thing do you think there's a misconception with maybe our sport or elite athletes in general where you are in in and like a decent money or decent amount of money because t- let's be honest track and field compared to football <laughs> <laughs> <They're maybe closer. laughs> it's not even close <laughs> no. but some some people could say like you know especially now because we are a lot more you know accessible with social media you know, you post a picture as an athlete of you, you know, buying this flashy car and then this person comments and says, oh, you should be training or you're mm. not even that good. You know, like you said, you suffered from you know, yeah, you know yeah. getting trolled on social media yourself. So do you think there's a misconception with that? Because although at times it was stressful for you to have, you know, to find stability for your family, you seem to manage it well compared to maybe others. Yeah, but I think I think the problem with athletes is they like to try and pretend they're balling when we know as, as athletes, they're not. Thank you for listening to a preview of today's show. To hear the full episode, visit www.thehiddengreatness.com.